Houthis fired more than 20 drones and missiles. A U.S. warship shot down 14 drones fired by... Defenses failed to prevent a drone strike in central Tel Aviv. He used 10 drones in this attack. Fires at both locations were so large they could be seen from space. At the front lines, Ukrainian soldiers fear Russian drones. Announced they would avoid the Red Sea because of the threat of attack. Thank you. So what you're looking at here is the aftermath of a drone attack on US soldiers. They were outmaneuvered, outnumbered, and overwhelmed. And all they had were the rifles in their hands to deal with a threat that was overhead. And this isn't some distant battlefield. This isn't some scene from the future. This is the reality that soldiers and our frontline defenders could face today. Now let me be clear, the footage here is not real. But the threat? The threat is very real. And it's not just in hot conflict zones that are a focus for these kinds of uh, um, activities and threats. And as that smoke rises, we see the consequences. From the mass hysteria in New Jersey that then spread all over the world on the origins of drones, to threats of the cartel bombing our troops on our own border, to even more recent attacks on US soil of power substations where drones uh, plugged into their infrastructure and damaged them. Every day, drones are growing more accessible, more advanced, and more dangerous. They can swarm a target, they can evade detection, shrug off mitigations, and they can deliver devastating payloads. Let me be clear, the traditional defenses for these small UAS are pretty powerless. So far, the solutions of the future have failed to keep up with how fast this dynamic threat is changing. You've got electromagnetic weapons, but they have very little to no effect on tethered or autonomous drones, which is a wildly growing trend in Ukraine. Directed energy weapons are very important, but they're not exactly portable for field operations. They're, they're not cheap. And when you need a lot more overnight, they certainly aren't arriving quickly. So what does that mean? It, it means that we have asked our defenders to accomplish a mission set with something essentially like having their hands tied behind their backs. Now, kinetic options are irreplaceable across military contexts in law enforcement. They're not going anywhere. But shooting down a drone is not exactly an easy thing to do. But what if there was a better way? What if there was a way to take down that $1,000 drone without missiles or without a bulky multi-million dollar system. A way to turn the rifle that's in every soldier's hands into a reliable counter drone system. I'm talking about something very simple but brutally effective, a tactic of pointing and shooting without worrying about whether you hit the target. It needs to be that easy, point and shoot. And so that's what we set out to do at Zero Mark. And today I'm here to tell you we did it. But first, let me tell you about how this came about. A few years ago, I was at the range with a number of former group and team guys, and let's just say that my aging body's performance did not go unnoticed. My hands are a little shakier than 20 years ago. Uh, I'm a little slower, but I am vehemently unwilling to accept and admit that. And so it struck me. You know, we've got cars that can drive themselves. Uh, we've got incredibly advanced weapon systems like SeaWiz from an ATR perspective. Why are dismounted soldiers so far behind in the tech game? Why isn't there something that gives me an advantage again, like Night Vision did in the early days of GWAD, which was basically cheating? You know, why can't my gun help make sure that I never, ever miss my target? So I set out to build a prototype to do so. Uh, and and I, as soon as we did that and accomplished the initial one, I knew I needed a much larger team because the solution had to be very simple, but very advanced at the same time. And that's what we ended up building. Introducing ZeroMark's Apex system, we like to Think of it as a handheld iron dome. <coughs> Excuse me. We developed the hardware and the software that can turn a standard rifle, virtually any rifle out there, into that next generation counter drone platform. There's no fancy lasers, there's, there's no special launchers. It's a mechanized buttstock that adjusts your aim in real time. And then we add computer vision on top of that for network decision support, which drives the capabilities even further on the rifle. It's a little bit like full self-driving, but for carbines. 
And what you see here is a rifle modified in really just under a minute by an end user, and one now that can be pointed at a threat, whether that's an enemy combatant or a drone in the sky, and neutralize it with cold, hard ammo with extreme precision and assurance. It's a modified stock plus computer vision, and that's really it. It's an AI-powered system that can identify and track drones, and when you pull the trigger, it makes sure that you're on your target. So this is the impact of ZeroMark in action, and I really can't tell you how simple it is, right? You've got a single soldier, a single rifle, and an incoming threat, and a successful hit to take that down in seconds. It's quite extraordinary from a, a tactical perspective to be able to you can imagine something like hitting a sporting clay with a rifle. It's similar to an FPV drone zipping across the sky. And it really wasn't possible until now. And again, it doesn't require retraining. It doesn't require new gear or complicated or expensive systems. It's just this. It's your equipment, your gun, and also becoming a, it becomes a drone killing machine when equipped with zero marks accessories. And that tech that's going to save your life, this is how much it weighs. Just 24 ounces, that's it. It's not a gigantic system that you can't bring into the battlefield, just 24 ounces. Now, Zero Mark isn't just for individuals. <clears throat> Imagine an entire squad that is equipped with a networked and part of a seamless network defense. With our command and control software that's running on each of the Apex systems, Zero Mark enables that for groups. Whether it's weapon target assignment or collateral damage prediction, it allows teams to predict and adapt and neutralize even the most complex and multifaceted uh, uh, threats. And this is what our enemies are doing to us on, on the offense, and really it's about damn time we do it on the defense. And let me tell you, too, about the roadmap, because we don't think that this can be just for rifles. It really needs to be on all kinetic systems to be effective. So we're actively developing that ability, right, to span across multiple platforms, from your, your handheld rifles for dismounted soldiers to crew serves to your 25-millimeter Bushmasters on ships. And eventually, we see a world where this kind of intelligence and technology is really standard issue. It's everywhere, because the threats, especially like drones, will be everywhere. And what's more, you know, you've got legislation changing very quickly for kinetic counter UAS operations within the US. We think we're positioned quite well to be a leader in that space to help with that in a safe and reliable manner. Now, right now, we are focused on frontline defenders. Uh, that is the first priority for us. But we do believe that Zero Mark will power really all things with triggers that go bang. Uh, it'll give them enhanced lethality. It'll give them capabilities they never have had before, such as network distributed strike. It'll bring about really an era of intelligent kinetics. So let me end today by telling you the best part. This is not some hypothetical. This is not some academic or, or laboratory solution. This is a solution that's available today uh, to put in the hands of our warfighters because we cannot delay defending against these kinds of threats. As we're all here in this room right now, our adversaries are building drones. They're loading them up on ships and cargo containers and vehicles, and they're preparing for a fight that we must be ready for as well. So let's talk. This QR code will connect you directly to myself on Signal. Uh, and our broader team. We have already begun taking some orders from US government. The demand for these kinds of capabilities is, is quite, it's quite extraordinary right now. Um, and that's why we need to prioritize and execute on the most important national security matters, which is really for this room in this moment. So if you're responsible for funding, whether it's defending our critical infrastructure or securing our skies or empowering our soldiers, this is your opportunity to start a conversation with us. Uh, and if you scan that QR code once again, it'll connect you directly with us, and we can help talk about how we might be able to support your mission sets and requirements. So please join me as I conclude here in thanking all of the veterans and the technologists and, and the engineers who made this possible, because in doing this and building this, they're going to save thousands of lives from these drone threats. Thank you.